Hey guys, uh, welcome to another video on uh, sentence positioning. Um, so uh, there is a, already an introductory video on sentence positioning where you get a bold statement and uh, you get a paragraph. You'll have to figure out where to place the bold statement. There'll be blanks in the paragraph. It's one of the easiest questions in CAD, to be honest. It's very hard to set a difficult uh, sentence positioning question. Uh, so make sure you do attempt both the questions uh, in CAD. Anyway, very quickly, uh, this is uh, question number one. You can pause the video and then solve for yourself. Question number one, question number two question number three and question number four. Okay. So four questions, uh, set a timer. Uh, it should not actually, if you are aiming for 99 percentile, uh, you are looking to solve all these four questions in about six minutes. If you are uh, looking, if you're someone who's looking to score about 90 percentile, eight minutes, and you can take 10 minutes if you are, if clearing the cutoff is, is your target, but by and large, that speed is extremely important. Take it very seriously. Don't get lost in the questions. You get all four right, but you took 15 minutes. I'm not happy as usual. Okay. So time's non-compromisable. It's okay if you get two right, two wrong, and you solved all of them in six minutes. That's absolutely fine by me. This is actually, uh, they come, they are with negative marks because it says option one, option two, option three, and option four. There is negative marking in these questions. So you'll have to be careful. You can't take random guesses, but by and large, if, uh, so it's like a total of, uh, three into four, 12 marks that you can get and, uh, minus four, right. If you get all four of them wrong, so you have to be a little careful, uh, in the, in cat, actually it's just two questions. So see if you can simulate that in your head, give yourself four minutes, try solving the first two, then give yourself four minutes, try solving the next two, or give yourself three minutes, try solving the first one and so on. Okay. Uh, uh, let's look at the first one. Uh, listening well, it took me, um, one second. Listening well, it took me too long to discover is a sort of magic trick. Both parties soften, blossom, they're less alone. Okay, Mr. Full Stop here. Uh, blank one. As a culture, we treat listening as an automatic process about which there is not a lot to say in the same category as digestion or blinking. Okay, so each of these four questions have actually used a, a different nuance uh, for you to be able to identify. So do watch. Uh, or don't watch up to you. But each of the four questions has a different way or a different trick inside it. For example, this particular question, you are looking at uh, the comparison of ideas and pronouns. Okay. For example, here, listening, we are only talking about listening here. Here, we are talking about listening well. A lot of you do not see the difference between these two. You think both are about listening. No. Listening well is a subset of the word of the idea listening because listening badly is also there, isn't it? So listening as an automatic process, therefore can't be one because this is a smaller idea compared to this. Okay. Okay. Uh, when the concept of listening is addressed at any length, it is in context of professional communication, something to be honed by leaders and mentors, but a specialization that everyone else can happily ignore. Still, we are talking about listening. This neglect is a shame. Okay. So till here, we are, we are okay. Now, uh, then there is blank too. Along the way, I discovered that Carl, Carl Rogers, one of the 20th century's most eminent psychologists, had put a name to this underrated skill. Okay. So the previous sentence, if it's a pronoun, the previous sentence must refer to the noun. But the previous sentence, if let's say nothing is there in the blank, the previous sentence, this neglect is a shame. So this neglect can't be the underrated skill, which means this underrated skill has to be something positive here, which means listening well is going to come here, isn't it? So the answer to this particular question will be option to end of the story. That's it, because you can't not put the sentence in this blank. So there's no point even reading uh, further per se, because you need something here because it says this underrated skill, so it has to be positive. This is negative. That's why watch out for the tones of the sentences. They go, it's, it's, it is going to help you uh, a lot. Okay, that's question number one. The answer is two. This question is dependent on vocabulary. Okay. Uh, a range of samba instruments might all play semi, -qua semi quavers, but the semi quavers are not all evenly spaced. Okay. So, range of samba, when people look at this range of samba instruments and then they see this in a Brazilian samba material, the loose jing jingles of the chocalho naturally fall behind the beat. Now, people get tempted to put this in blank one. Okay. But that's not the right way to go about it. Okay. Why? Because you're talking about entire percussion section here, names for that. Okay. And that's the entire percussion section is actually being introduced here. So a range of samba instruments might all play semi quavers. I need to know what we are talking about here. So this introduction is needed in a Brazilian samba material the, and the loose jingles of the chocalho naturally fall behind the beat while the tamborim is played ahead of the beat, driving the music forward. So music falling behind the beat and music being driven forward is our bigger ideas than spacing of the semi quavers. Okay, that's the first thing you have to understand. So it can't be option one. Then there is a blank. 
the swing of a brazilian samba gives the rhythm a galloping feel gives the rhythm a galloping feel so naturally fall behind the beat and played ahead of the beat driving the music forward so this is back and forth that's why the swing of a brazilian samba so this swing is basically referring to this part so there can't be anything in blank to again vocab right what is the swing sometimes some instruments fall behind some instruments fall ahead the swing of a brazilian samba gives the rhythm a galloping feel galloping is as if it's going faster which is this isn't it Drive the music forward that's the continuation so between these two you can't talk about spacing we are not talking about spacing yet we're still talking about this the, the beats the swing the rhythm these are all synonyms of each other okay then there is a blank and then it says this elasticity this what is elasticity something that can be stretched and compressed isn't it but there is nothing nothing to stretch here it's the it's, it's talking about going fast so there's no stretch here. But if you look at this bold statement, a range of samba instruments might all play semi-quavers, but the semi-quavers are not evenly spaced. Okay, so there is different spacing. This elasticity, elasticity is basically change in length, right? This elasticity can be thought of as the rhythmic equivalent of a blue note, which is sung or played in the gap between the strict semitones found on a piano keyboard. So this is a very good option. Okay, it's also heard in a Viennese waltz in which the second beat of three is traditionally brought forward to give the music a lilt. Lilt is the up and down gentle soothing rhythm is called a lilt. Lilting is something that's soothing to the ear like a lullaby. Uh, classical musicians know uh, this as a form of rubato, stolen time. Time is taken from one note and given to another with the music still in time. Obviously, four will not fit here because this this is, this is needs a closure, isn't it? Range of samba instruments might all play semi quavers. Whatever this means, you don't need to care about this, this term here. But the semi quavers are not evenly spaced. Doesn't make sense here because we're already talking about time and we're talking about lilt and we're talking about stolen time. So this part is all extra, end of the paragraph. But this elasticity is what needs pronoun again so elasticity being this you have to make this connection swing and beat you have to make this connection so if you make a connection between beat rhythm gallop and swing you will be able to eliminate two if you make the connection with elasticity and even uh, even and uneven spacing you will be able to make the connection that the bold statement comes in three can't be one because before the introduction itself, you can't talk about semi-quavers and the spacing of, of them because we're still talking about falling behind the beat and going ahead of the beat. So uh, falling behind and going ahead are both being spoken about here. So even spacing, uneven spacing comes later, isn't it? Because we're talking about both the categories in this sentence. You can't talk about it before and just say not evenly spaced. Now, so the answer is obviously three, okay? But you'll have to be a little careful. If let's say three was not your answer, I'll be okay if you got one as the answer. It's strong, wrong, obviously. But one is one means you're applying your brain a little bit, okay? Now, now, I, now, how do you resolve when you have such tight options between three and one, okay? In a Brazilian samba, the loose jingles of the chocalho naturally fall behind the beat while the tamborum is played ahead of the beat, driving the music forward. What? So if you picked one, you basically created your own story. What is the story that you created? A range of samba instruments uh, might all play the same thing, but they're not all evenly spaced. In a Brazilian samba, the loose jingles uh, uh, of the chocalho fall behind the beat, while the tamborum is played ahead of the beat, driving the music forward. Some, something is behind the beat, something is ahead of the beat, and, and the, this entire thing is a range of samba instruments. Okay, Therefore, this is the introduction and this is the example. That could have been your logic if you create that amazing story in your head, imaginary story. Now, how do you, uh, how do you stop yourself and pick, from picking one in that case? Okay, Range of samba instruments might all play semi-quay but the semi quavers are not all evenly spaced uh, and because they're not and this is the example of something that is falling behind this is the example of something that is going ahead of the beat okay driving the music forward the swing of a brazilian samba gives the rhythm a galloping feel but then when you come here okay if this is already here this elasticity can be thought of as a rhythmic equivalent of a blue note you still cannot answer what this elasticity is isn't it because you're already calling this part the swing same thing you can't call elasticity again no you need something else which is which is why you need to put this in three so even if you created your whole story which you shouldn't have created in the first place let's say you did create in your brains working really creatively you will be able to explain why this follows this if you don't know what a semi quavers it's absolutely fine they don't test your music knowledge per se it's absolutely fine but you'll have to be careful in cat because this elasticity is left out open okay so the paragraph won't make sense therefore it has to be three and not one please remember that So this is an easy question uh, if you understand context and if you understand ideas. This one is basic CR, upstream and downstream arguments. Okay, this particular question. Uh, adding AI generated content into the mix 
will make things worse, not better. Which mix are we talking about? Therefore, can't be one because we need context to explain what this mix is. Some things there, a bunch of things are there. Adding AI into that mix will make things worse. So we need context. We need someone to explain to us what, what that whole mix is. The use of generative AI is part of a broader sh shift of mainstream media organizations towards acting like digital platforms that are data hungry, algorithmically optimized and desperate to monetize our attention. See, this thing is called Oxford comma A comma B comma and C when in a series in schools, a lot of stuff that they taught us was wrong. Okay. English, especially I'm not a big fan of how they teach English in school. First of all, and one of the basic rules that they taught us in school was before and you don't put comma. Okay. In a, in a series, it's exactly wrong before and is exactly where we need the comma the most because, uh, you will have issues otherwise. Okay. For example, sometimes I'll give you this, uh, classic sentence. One of my favorite sentences, they invited, okay. Dumbledore, they invited Dumbledore um sorry they invited my parents okay comma dumbledore and wonder woman let's say this is your sentence okay now you'll see why uh, the oxford comma is important they invited my parents uh they invited my parents comma dumbledore and wonder woman this particular sentence you don't know if my parents are dumbledore and wonder woman and therefore i have superpowers or that they invited four people, my parents, Dumbledore and Wonder Woman. If you just put a comma here, Oxford comma, clearly tells you my parents, two people, Dumbledore, third person, comma, and Wonder Woman. It's a series. That's why this Oxford comma is so very important. People who don't use Oxford comma kind of are people who torture people like me who want to read clean stuff. Okay. Anyways. So the idea is, please remember that the Oxford comma is actually coming in front of the and in a, in a list. Anyways, so um, digital platforms that are data hungry, number one, algorithmically optimized. Number two, desperate to monetize our attention. Number three, three things. Okay. And then there is a blank. Media corporations opposition to crucial reforms to the Privacy Act, which would help impede. Impede means to put place an obstacle, impede, hinder, isn't it? Uh, all these words mean the same thing, placing obstacles, impede this behavior and better protect us online makes the strategy abundantly clear. Okay. So this strategy, there is a pronoun, this behavior, isn't it? Media corporations, opposition to crucial reforms, which would help impede this behavior. This behavior is which behavior has to be this. There's no behavior in this, isn't it? So there can't be a bold sentence in, in two because we need these two pronouns, this strategy and this behavior. There's a strategy and behavior here. The use of generative is part of a broader shift of mainstream media organizations towards acting like acting and behavior. Very easy connection to make, isn't it? Next, third blank. The long-standing problem of dwindling profits in traditional media in the digital economy has led some outlets to adopt digital platforms, surveillance, capitalism, business model. So obviously this will not come here because we'll make things worse Means some problems there. There is no problem here. This is continuing the same tone. So the tone on, so if the tone on either side of the blank is the same, but the bold statement has a very strong tone. You'll have to be a little careful, right? So if this is strongly negative, this is strongly negative. This needs to be strongly negative. Okay. But these two are continuing tones. It's almost as if this is elaborating this, then this has no place here. Okay. So adding AI generated content into the mix will make things worse, not better. Won't fit here because it will help impede this behavior and better protect us online, making the strategy abundant, makes the strategy abundantly clear. Media corporations opposition to crucial reforms to the Privacy Act makes the strategy abundantly clear means the media corporations want to go ahead with the strategy. That's why they are opposing the reforms to Privacy Act. Why the long-standing problem of dwindling profits is what is driving them. Okay. Uh, after all, if you can't beat them, join them. Isn't after all actually kind of makes sense, isn't it? So they they don't want the privacy act because they can't beat the AI. So they're joining the AI because it will help them with their profits. And then adding AI generated content to the mix will make things worse, not better. Okay, how will come in the next paragraph? Isn't it? So it can't fit anywhere else but in four. Okay, the answer is four because till here we're still discussing why they want to add AI, why AI generated content to the mix. But if you add it, it'll make things worse. Therefore, comes in the last sentence because it's the most downstream. It's the consequence of this whole strategy, isn't it? And if you remember the upstream downstream argument rules that I've discussed in Parajambas time and time again, what the event always comes first, the consequence comes later. So if this is the consequence and this is the event, simple critical reasoning, right? The consequence comes before the uh, comes after the event. Therefore, four is your answer. This is the last one and my favorite question of all the four. Um, even now, every female conductor who ascends the podium is forging a new frontier. Forging is 
it's creating a new path right creating a new thing forging is basically uh, you create new objects swords and what not right with iron work basically metal work we use this word but you can use it metaphorically okay in 2005 when the australian conductor uh, simone young became the first woman to conduct the all male vienna philharmonic since its founding in 1842 see so avoid reading all these pronouns if you want to she achieved a milestone okay and the chinese american conductor jian jian next conducts the new, new york philharmonic she will raise her arms to an orchestra where women outnumber men by a margin of 1 for the first time in its 180 year history two examples have been provided here okay both these examples need context or introduction and if you remember the cr rules theory comes before examples this is the theory every even now every female conductor who ascends the podium is forging a new frontier one example second example okay and then there is a blank what we may hope now why not here two is also a good idea right you can give two examples and then say even now every female conductor who ascends the podium is forging a new frontier so this is also possible so it could be one it could be two what we may hope for going forward we may hope for going forward is that a woman will never have to negotiate what she is wearing or consider having to exert an authority modeled on patriarchal authority we may hope that see this is continuing the tone we may hope we may hope so definitely not third blank we may hope that the music will prevail with her ascent she will become a superhero for good for the next generation of women so that any female musician sitting in her orchestra is able to think i would like to do that okay and then and then uh, double dash basically is like bracketed information extra information it's not information that you just scan and leave it's just because i'm calling it extra information it's not part of the same sentence it's a different sentence almost of sorts okay someone else can look up to this woman and say i would like to do that okay so this is already concluding as to why their ascent is so important right so here it doesn't make sense this is a much bigger idea than this this is the consequence when every female conductor who ascends the podium is forging a new frontier then someone sitting in the back will think i would like to do that isn't it so this will not this bold sentence won't come afterwards so four is also eliminated which brings us to the big question of is it going to be one or two now if i give two examples and then say even now every female conductor who ascends the podium is forging a new frontier it sounds okay until you identify and this is classic para jumble question also this even now is a chronological indicator in para jumbles right so even now won't make sense here when i'm already talking about the present in 2005 and something that's going to happen in the future for this at the point at which this article was written this even now is presently in the current era okay so even now makes sense here even now will not make sense here because i'm already giving away the date and and one one in 2005 one in the future so obviously even now won't make sense even now in the present era for example 2005 this happened and this is going to happen next therefore one is a better option than two okay so that brings us to the uh, end of this particular uh, video i hope you learned a thing or two sentence positioning questions i can't emphasize enough are extremely easy questions if you just apply a little common sense you have to understand vocabulary how to understand a little bit of uh, pronoun connections and cr upstream arguments downstream arguments and lateral arguments all of which i have covered on the video plenty of times uh, in on the channel plenty of times so go watch them uh, go watch them until uh, next time peace out